Okay, welcome back to another edition of 5 Minutes on K-12 Online Learning, and today joining us is Mickey Rubinow. So Mickey, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. So I'm actually one of the co-founders of Connections Academy, um, which is one of the couple of leading online learning providers, full-time online learning providers across the U.S. We founded the company back in 2001. Um, so that means I'm really old <laughs> on top of everything else, really old in the field and also really old. Um, and before that, I was actually involved with the launch of the E-Rate program. I used to work at Scholastic editing an education technology magazine for teachers. I've sort of spent my whole career in ed tech and really the last two decades in online learning. All right. Now, I know with Connections, you guys have trained probably at this point thousands of teachers, maybe even tens of thousands at this stage. Um, we've got a bunch of teachers now that are being thrown into this. Some are just starting it this week. Others might have a week or two, at the most three under their belt. Um, what's some advice that you would give them based upon the things you've seen with your uh, time at Connections and in the field in general? So the thing that really strikes me, the, uh, the time that I spent observing really good teachers who are in an online environment, um, as well as observing really good online professional development for teachers, is that um, the key to the whole thing seems to be communication. Um, so people sometimes say, like, what does it take to be a really great online teacher? And I usually say, you need to be a really good teacher and then put that on steroids. Um, so all the things that we've learned about engaging students, um, paying close attention to how they're learning as individuals, uh, tailoring the learning experience for them, that's all not just possible, but almost mandatory in an online learning environment, which means that you as a teacher need to be really um, adept at um, two-way communication, at really listening, listening to the students, listening to their data also, um, and then being really clear and engaging in your, in your outward communication as well. Um, so we spend a lot of time training teachers on how to do that, how to communicate directly with students, how to communicate with their families, um, which is something that teachers don't have to do sometimes in brick and mortar schools, um, and then how to um, really see the whole student through your interactions with them, their interactions with the material, the data about their learning, and address them as a whole student. Um, Bottom line, you know, great teaching is about relationships, right? Um, and in an online environment, that's uh, as important, if not more so, um, than in a face-to-face -face environment. Cool. Now, you mentioned families, and I know with the, uh, the folks that are involved with Connections Academy, the parents are oftentimes much more engaged in the educational relationship with the, the school and the teacher than what they are in a, a traditional classroom. So using that as a model, are there things that you can suggest to folks that are moving from that more traditional relationship to more the model that we've often seen with Connections Academy over the years? Yeah, so the term that we use for that role that parents play in, an, in a full-time online school is learning coach. Um, so you're not the teacher, um, but you're also doing more than you would traditionally do as a parent. Um, and that learning coach role, I think, really also applies to what parents are going through right now. When all of a sudden their kids are at home, their schools have sent a bunch of material home, and they're expected to help move things along. So it's a lot about... Um, motivating and observing your, your student, making sure that they have what they need to learn. So sometimes that's just a quiet space um, in somewhere in your house where they can have a dedicated learning environment, even if it's just four square feet, right? Um, that they, um, they are working at the times and at the pace that makes most sense for them. So we typically will encourage parents to have their students be working in bursts of about 50 minutes or an hour, not longer than that, and less for little guys. Um, and so making sure that you're kind of setting a schedule with your student, that you're monitoring that, that if they're getting antsy or bored um, or stuck, that you can intervene with them and that you're basically the eyes and ears for their teacher um, and that you're in close partnership with that teacher. And I think that's really true with what we're seeing, you know, traditional schools trying to do in this remote learning environment is that teachers are you know, swimming, um, uh, trying to keep their head above water. And the parents are doing the same thing. So you got to partner up with each other um, to help each other out. Um, and really uh, focusing in on what you know best about your child and helping the teacher focus in on that as well. 
Um, so that sounds kind of squishy. Um, it, uh, it's definitely not the same thing as like saying, okay, the bell rings at 7.30 in the morning and again at 3.30 and in between, it's nothing but books. It's really taking advantage of what you can do in an online learning environment, which is personalized, you know, um, adapt to where your kid is, how they learn and make it the best for them that it possibly can be. All right, perfect. Well, thank you very much. This has been another five minutes on K-12 Online Learning, and today we've had Mickey Rovna. Great. Thank you so much, Michael.